Love, love will keep us together. Think of me, babe, whenever some sweet talking girl comes along, singing a song. Don't mess around. You got to be strong. Just stop, stop, cause I really love you. Stop, stop. I'll be thinking of you. Look in my heart and let love keep us together. Whatever. <laughs> well done. You, you belong to me now. Ain't gonna set you free now. When those girls start hanging around, talking me down, here with your heart and you will hear a sound. Just stop, stop, cause I really love you. Stop, stop, I'll be thinking of you. Look in my heart and let us keep us together, whatever. That's it. Enough of that bullshit song. That was Captain and Tennille. Love will keep us together. Released in 1975. Check them out. I think they're going to go places. Goddaughter was named to Neil. That's not Goddaughter. What do you call her? Nah. That was niece. Named to, niece. Something that was named to Neil purely based after that. Paternity band. suit. Hey, paternity <laughs> suit. <laughs> <laughs> what did I know? It's terrible. Uh, that's fucking. Hilarious. Let me introduce this bullshit podcast. This is Invert the Y. Episode start out log Tappan's log twelve point one point five point nine in the USS Invert the Y is orbiting another planet of Richard and bullshit. And today. I got him back. I got Rocket Russell and everybody's favourite drunken monkey. Hello, everybody. Yes, they're Hello. in. Hello. the crowd are all. We don't have sock puppet Jason Relaxation. He's MIA. But he's here in spirit. Thank you, Richard. And I, I'm happy to be here as a sock puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Topic of the show, let's get into it. Because I know Rocket Russell's been sitting on this for a while, but he wants to, he's got to let it out because he's ready to burst at the seams. Oh, fucking, why do we follow this stupid <laughs> fucking sport? Drunken Monkey's going to come along for the ride, yeah. literally. Oh. He's a, he's a partial. I've always been a big fan of netball. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. He's, he's just going to sit back, listen to us rant, and chime in as the voice of reason, I'm sure. We want to talk about the Formula One regulation changes for 2021. They're significant. So Rocket Russell wants to vent, and I have a bit of a vent as well because I've got some major issues with it as well. But you know what I thought we'd do, Rocket Russell? Go through it step by step. Okay. Talk about what we do like and what we don't like. So let's put a little bit of rationale into this bullshit. Um, so the first thing I want to say about the regulation changes was a major. They reckon it's the biggest since they've, since the sports big, you know. Biggest one since ground effect in the early 80s. Pretty much, maybe even the biggest one since the fifties when they first launched the the sport as a championship. Mm. That's what I've been. That's what they're saying. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's pretty significant. So let's go through through the list. And if I'm missing something, can you pull me up uh, on it? The first thing is obviously the cars are significantly different in the way they look, right? Yes. So they say better looking cars. What are we talking about? Well, eighteen inch rim tires are in on the car for the first time ever. They look pretty mean. They look pretty cool. That's been coming in for like – they've been wanting that to come in for ages because they're saying modern road cars mostly have larger rim tyres these days. So back in the early days, 13-inch rims were the average size of tyres. Now they're more like 18, thereabouts. So that's keeping in line with the like the modern road cars that we have. They look pretty cool. I'm cool with that. And I like the way the car looks because they got rid of all the bullshit on the yeah. – uh, uh, what is it? The uh, side plane – of the car, all those little bits and the pieces. Little, their little carbon fibre fingers. All that stuff, all those that messy bit, that's all gone. Yeah. I like the look <clears> of the cars, man, i got to say. It, it, look, there's a few questionable things on them. Um, I, I'm still trying to work out what this little f- flap over the front wheels is. I don't know either, but apparently it's an aerodynamic yeah. device yeah. to try and help uh, airflow, airflow over, over the wheel or something. So th- these cars have always, they've all been designed with the purpose of making the racing a lot closer so they can get yeah, closer so they're, to they're the... Yeah, they're claiming a 70% reduction in wake at the, ba- at the back end of it. Yeah, because that's so, a big issue now. Yeah, they the can't, big issue is now you can't get close to no. the car because basically aerodynamic engineers are trying to unsettle the air going past the car so you can't get that nice air. This is why we've got DRS. Because the drag reduction system, which I think came in in 2011, yes, thereabouts, that was a that's a band aid over the issue of we can't 
get overtake. close to the cars and we can't yeah. overtake an F1. And so that drag reduction system was introduced to try and promote that on straights and so on. And the, the, it's still going to be there in 2021, which makes me wonder. Yeah, that's weird. It, so they've done all the wind model testing and all that crap, but they've left DRS. So the, it makes me think that they're second guessing themselves. Is it going to actually provide the significant downforce we think it will? Or yeah, they, I think know, I think they're hedging their bets, man. If they're leaving DRS, because I couldn't believe that they did when I first read it. Yeah, I'm like, because you know, I thought all of this was going to eliminate uh, the need for DRS because DRS is artificial and they've gone basically to ground effect. So yes. all of the aerodynamic aids are basically being removed. The They're underneath the car now. So it's all – you remember in the 80s they banned uh, the, the ground effect cars because they had a really big advantage oh. over traditional aerodynamic devices like well, wings. Especially, especially when um, – what's his name? Oh, God, what's his name? Ron was putting fans at the back of cars saying they were part of the radiator so he could suck more air. Yeah, to yeah, down closer to that the wacky ground. shit. Yeah, yeah, look, ground effects was uh, an amazing concept. Um, it I'm glad they went down that route because for, this is, look, by the way, these regulations have been in the making for like how long now? Five years plus? Five years, yeah. Easy over five years, right? And they, they've been pissing about with where they wanted to go with it and ground effect is really the best solution to try and uh, promote closer overtaking. Yes. Or, or closer following of a car. That's in front, so you yeah, don't get that dirty air. Yeah, acts differently. Yeah, the cars, so yeah, I'm Which good is with interesting. Yeah, it is. So I personally like the way the cars look because to me, the big thing about the regulation change was they wanted to make the cars look more modern. They wanted to reset the clock on all this shit. So if you're new to the sport or you've been with the sport for a long time, you can go. You know what? These are a, like a significant change to the regulations. I can visibly see it. I don't. I don't understand everything about the change. But I can visibly see the cars are different, yeah, so yeah. I know that they've done something major with the rules. It's more of I mean, when you look at the front wing, it's more of a Boeing sort of. It aircraft looks. Wing, it looks like know? an aircraft there's wing. A, yeah, there's no such end plates no. anymore. I it's like it, man. It, it's look. It doesn't look bad. It's it no. still carries that sort of Formula One look, and I'm. I actually really liked them back in the day when the nose was on the ground. Yes, yeah, so did I. Yeah. That's you know what that looks more like a '90s car. Yeah. Because the the nose is not um, separated from the wing, wing. Yeah. so that it's just straight like. Significant one piece was is it two elements on the wing or is at, it at the moment? But that's unconfirmed. Yeah, because you know what I hated about these this year's regulation change. You know how they took all the furniture off the wing, but they, they still moved left, it, they moved it backwards. They moved it backwards, but they've kept five uh, planes on the actual wing, which was just silly. They should have got rid of that and made it just two uh, planes, but they didn't touch that at all. I, but I'd say it with the aerodynamic people wouldn't have liked you doing too much big changes in one season. So, you know, well, and I like imagine Mes they would have all been ready for this, you know, prepare. Pre more like Mercedes and Ferrari didn't like that change. No. So anyway, it looks like it's from the, we, I'm looking at the picture here. It looks like it's two planes on the wing, the front wing. Front pin wing looks like two yeah. or three planes. I'm going to go with three. I reckon the car looks sick. Got a, the only thing, the, you know what the best thing about it is? They've uh, amalgamated the halo to the chassis. Yeah, a, it doesn't look better. like a tack on. No. It doesn't look like a thong anymore. No. That, well, they are tacked on today for sure. Mm. So it looks a lot better than that. Than that. Um, the next thing is fairer finances. I've got a problem with this. Oh, this is, how are you going to regulate I got this? I've got a big problem with this. No one's really talking about it, and I'm, I'm absolutely amazed they're not. So what are they saying? They're saying... A cost cap of $175 million per team per, per, team year. per year. Is that in US dollars or you, uh, pounds? We don't know. Uh, well, Liberty's must American. Be, but must be pounds. Or, be. or it might be American dollars. Don't know. Yeah. Anyway, the currency is $175 million per team per year, and that applies to anything that covers on-track performance but excludes marketing costs. That's a problem. The salaries of drivers, that could be a problem. And on top of three per – and and on – and of the top three personnel on any team. That's also a problem. Because I could be Ferrari and I can get Adrian Newey, for example, to do my aerodynamics and pay him, I don't know, a hundred million, million bucks a year, mm -hmm. right? Because I've got the money in my deep pockets and I've just got the best designer in the in Formula One. So that doesn't change shit, right? No. The, the marketing is also a problem because what if you are a bigger team and you're more exposed on the grid? You can get like Marlboro or Philip Morris, and cover your dirty tracks with it being tobacco and get heaps of heaps of sponsorship and money. 
you know what I mean? There, there's no way that they can they're stamping out who's getting what in terms of like the, the the sponsorship or the finances on the actual car. So that means some cars are going to get more revenue. Yes, because they're excluding that. That's what they're saying. Or am I wrong? I don't know. Excludes marketing costs. So marketing costs would be sponsorship. It would be costs of doing promotional activities like sending your drivers out to do a fun day. See, a, I mean, okay, I understand that because you've got to have those kind of days. You, you do, but... You promote the sport. You, but I would assume it's... Where's the revenue? But wouldn't it cut... But it's saying nothing about revenue. Like a sponsor coming in and paying you... Toy, toy. See, I think that comes under a different thing. Like, Does it? When I look at marketing costs, I'm thinking of promotional flyers. I'm thinking of, as you said, sending the drivers to, to do some to do crazy some day, stupid yeah. crazy day, yeah. some fan base thing. So, okay, marketing, yeah. That's if you see how iffy this shit is. Okay, That's who are the top three personnel of any team? Who so would you'd you be, say the top three? Uh, you're, you're Toto Wolf, you're yeah, your team, team principal, engineers, or your designer. Yeah. Um, so, you, so team principal. So, yeah. for an example, Toto Wolf. Yes. The designer, so if we're talking Mercedes, James Allison. James? Well, he's in, is he? No, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's there. the uh, chief Engineer. technical yes. officer. Uh, so he'd be one of the three. And I'd say the aerodynamicist would be the other person because they usually pay them a bucket load as well. So the, the biggest well known aerodynamicist out there is Adrian Newey, who's the aerodynamicist God. for, he's God basically, the, as in terms of aerodynamics. And he's with Red Bull. Yeah. Right. Which is why Red Bull has been as competitive as they have been for so long. Um, those two, I think they would be the top three personnel and what they're saying in these and regulations the and the driver. Yeah. So you can pay your driver, whatever you want, basically according to these rules. So you can get Lewis Hamilton, if you've got the pockets for it and he could go race for Renault and Renault might be able to pay him, I don't know, hundred million pounds over three years or some bullshit. Right. That's what they're basically saying. That's, that's an open slather. Rule. Yeah. Well, Zach Brown's come out and said, well, Zach Brown's the, the CEO of McLaren and said, I think we should include the drivers. I think that should be in part of the budget. I wouldn't disagree with that because... But the problem is, I mean, well, let's use Schumacher as an example. What, his last few years at Ferrari, he was on $99 million a year. Yeah, that was now, silly that, money. That leaves you $75 million to travel, build your car, do your aerodynamics. But, just, but what it's saying is the bigger teams are going to be able to get the better drivers still yeah. because... You, again, it, let's use uh, Lewis Hamilton as an example for a sec because he's now won his sixth world title. So he would, I would suggest, demand a lot of market, like a lot of money. Yes, for his time, right? So if you're uh, Ferrari and you really, really want Lewis Hamilton to finish his career off with you, with you, what I'm reading that as. You can pay him basically whatever you want. Oh, throw, throw the wall. Throw, throw, throw money at him, basically. Well, I mean, but if there was at, a cap but, on that shit, but you look you know, at big teams like Ferrari and Mercedes, like Ferrari's expected for what was it between three hundred and five hundred million a year. That was spending three fifty, three hundred and fifty million dollars a year, apparently. So now they've roughly. got a, what hundred hundred seventy five yeah, million. But, but free I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a driver. I'm gonna get to this, right? Let me get to where the loophole on this bullshit is. And what they haven't, what they haven't considered, right? Um, so, going back to this, it's saying marketing costs. Yeah, like you said, driver days. Um, but I would assume that includes sponsorship. Sponsorship doesn't get mentioned in this, so I'm assuming you can get as many sponsors as, as you want and get them to throw as much money as you as, as you want for your for for you to put their name on your car. Yep. Right. You know what my problem with all this is. Two things. Firstly, the obvious. How do you regulate it? They say they're going to put a, bo- uh, a watchdog in that goes routinely through their their uh, balance sheet and see what they've spent and what they haven't spent. You know what my big problem with this is? They're not taking into account where teams currently are in terms of their infrastructure. Yeah. Right. So if you're um, uh, Toro Rosso, I'm just pulling that out of my ass, they've got less facilities than Ferrari does. Yes. In terms of wind tunnels, in terms of like R&D. And less money to chuck wind tunnels up in the next year exactly. to get it before the yeah. budget caps. So you know who's going to win championships after 2021? Those that move off, get off their ass pretty quick and start building the best wind tunnels, if the you're best not facilities. Already, if you haven't already got it built you're or done. well underway, you are done. Yeah. Because those big wind tunnels, I mean, the, the, the leading wind tunnel is actually the Sauber wind tunnel. That is the one that is considered the Well, they rent it out too. They, well, That's they rent, another loophole. They rent it out to F1. But, the, uh, 
Formula One, that's where they did all their testing, all the stuff. You like, know who else has got a good wind tunnel? Toyota at Cologne. Because when Toyota walked away from uh, Formula One, they left their wind tunnel for their own road car division. Um, this is my understanding. I could be wrong. And they still have that wind tunnel. And pe- and people, uh, teams use that wind tunnel. They rent it out. Toyota does effectively for those teams that don't have great wind tunnels. And they use that wind tunnel at Cologne in Germany. So um, this, I think we discussed this the other week. Another, another thing that concerns me is, okay, so Ferrari's wind tunnel is a dual-use wind tunnel. Yep. It's used for the F1 team and it's used for their road car manufacturing. Yep. So where does the – so if they've got to upgrade the tunnel, you know, we've, what are they – what – how do they police that? Well, that's the whole point. How you can know, they? They can't police how do you put that a, because you can say, well, actually, we're not doing it for the Formula One cars. No. We're doing it for but, our road cars. But, the, but it's the same tunnel. But the overall thing is, if you put a, a, a blanket approach on this, every team's – infrastructure will be quite different from each other. Oh, yeah. So how Massively. can you possibly say that's even? And how can you possibly expect teams that have got lesser facilities to ever catch up in the world of co- uh, ca- capping your costs? Yeah. No, you can't do it. Can't. So I don't see any change in the pecking order because you know Mercedes have got one of the best facilities out there. You know Ferrari does. You know Red Bull do too. Yep. And everybody else is playing Alfa catch Romeo, up. Alfa Romeo. Yeah, Alfa Romeo do as well. Yeah. Renault say they've been investing in this shit for a while, but I don't really know if they have been because I don't think they're really serious about Formula One, to be honest. Um, so, again, if you're Renault, let's use them as an example because they've promised the world to Daniel Ricciardo, for example, that in 2021 their championship material. Well, 2020 their championship material, according to them, weren't they? Uh, they want to taste uh, – he was in uh, – oh, They want to win next year, that's right. He wants to taste champagne. Yes. He did an interview this week. And he said that his expectations for 2020 is to taste champagne. Whether it's on the top step or the minor placings, he wants to taste champagne next year, right? But what I'm saying is, after next year, when all the new regulations come into play, if you haven't got facilities that are on par with, say, Ferrari or Mercedes, you're fucked. Yep. So Renault have to invest. I don't know if they have been. I'm not sure. Supposedly they've been investing. Supposedly they have. But, okay, maybe not Renault, but say, I don't know, uh, a Toro Rosso or who Haas, right? Haas, Haas is an interesting one, see, because they come into – they hire the Ferrari wind tunnel. See? And how does that work in the brave new world? Yeah. Right? So that's what I'm saying. So I don't – I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Haas's actual entire aerodynamics division is based in Ferrari. They're interesting because they use Dallara for their chassis, so yeah. that's based in the U.S., they use their aerodynamics and other bits and pieces from her, from Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah, so I mean, their aerodynamics. But that's so that, not that's fair. But that's not fair now to the other teams because they're using a su- more su- a superior wind tunnel than other teams may may or not may have. Yep. Right. So my point is, is that it's not even. They're going into these regulations of cost uh, having a, a cap well, with uneven with an uneven. It can never be even. I, I mean. No, I know it's not, but what I'm saying is I don't particularly like um, having a cap because because no. you can't spend now to catch up. And look, you know, you look at Mercedes, you look at Ferrari, you look at Red Bull, like they can't afford it. They've, they've just saved $175 million. I, I can get a really good accountant for that. And two plus two equals whatever. Oh, I'm man, I'm I sure, tell them to I am sure there's going to be the best creative accounting you've ever seen. Oh. I am sure they're going to store shit all over the place to to avoid this. But do you see what I'm trying to say? It's not you're going into these regulations and it's not even. No. So you're fucked. This should have been this should have that rule should have been told to them three years ago. Yes. Right. In three years' time, we will have a hundred and seventy five million dollar cap. You have three years to get up to scratch or get up to speed. You know? Yeah. That that's that that one's a dodgy rule to me. I think that could get changed very easily and quickly. Well, uh, I mean, they have said that you know. I think Ross was saying it's it's almost in stone. Uh yeah, there'll be a cap, but it's it's just how much. Well, I think all these. I think this is all still movable. I think the teams still have to come. You know what's going to happen? Twenty twenty one will come along. They'll live with these rules, and then twenty twenty two they'll change the shit out of them. You watch, because <laughs> all the teams are going to whinge. About the cost, you know, the cap. Some teams, you know what, because you're right, some teams are happy with it because they're like saying, like Williams, for example, oh, we don't even spend that much now. So if you're going to say to us that we 
can spend even more than what we're currently spending. Okay, cool. Yep. And then other teams like Ferrari are saying, fuck, you've, cut, you've more than halved our budget, right? But that's okay for them because they've got the best, the best facilities in the whole, the whole grid. You know what I mean? That's a question. Yeah. Is it? So it was the top. Was it both drivers or just one driver that comes under the finances? I thought drivers. I thought drivers, I, I thought, I salary think, of drivers and the top three. Yeah, I think like drivers that. are excluded, yeah. which again is a problem. But that's – so again, the best teams will probably get the best drivers still. Yeah. Because you can pay this whatever is, you uh, want. Man, man, we've just saved $175 million bucks. We're all good. Yeah, plus we've got all these other, other resources at the back end that no one knows about. So if Lewis Hamilton wants to come to Ferrari, I'm sure we can pay him whatever he wants. You know what I mean? But a William, Williams can't do that. No. So that's my point. No. And I mean, part of the finances is a restructuring the amount of money you get, don't, aren't they? Uh, yeah, that's a bit iffy too. That's because, I mean, Ferrari get, what, they get, they, they just give Formula One to Ferrari. Uh, but that's been revised too. That's what I mean. They're yeah. revising the money. I know, yeah. I know Ferrari, well, they don't get the- Ferrari, Mercedes and Williams got bigger cuts than everybody else. Yeah, but Renault also get a discount too, remember? Because- they, they stitched that up with Bernie because when they came back into Formula One, they were whinging about the fact that they're, they, they're entitled they to it. They missed out on their TV deals, yeah. Well, they, well they, they were saying we're historically significant because we've been in Formula One for a long time. Fucking historically. That's what they said, and they wanted a bigger piece of the that, pie. That goes back to my rant the other last time we talked about this where, you know, Ferrari, oh, 50 years in racing. Well, it wasn't fucking Formula One. You quit because you killed people. Oh, you mean Mercedes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't in Formula Yeah, like but, but Renault is saying they're, sign- they're historically significant and they got a better deal from Bernie. Because remember, they were going to pull out again. And Bernie said, no, stay and I'll, I'll cut a deal for you and I'll actually give you a bigger piece of the prize money, right? Because you have been, you've been in it longer than all these other teams apart from Ferrari and As far as I'm concerned, Mercedes. there is basically three historic teams within Formula One. Ferrari, McLaren, Williams. Anyone else, fuck off. Uh, yeah, because they've been, they've been there the longest. Yeah, they've, Ferrari's they've, been they've, there since the start. Yeah, yeah. Williams has been there since, what, mid-70s? Who's that, sorry? Williams? Williams? Oh, yeah, mid-70s, yeah. Mid-se- I mean, but late Frank, 70s. Was, Frank was a mechanic well before yeah, then. Yeah, but late 70s, I think he brought in his he own team. In the team. Yeah, yep. And McLaren, which have been around since, what, early 70s, mid-70s? Well, Bruce, Bruce, Mc, Bruce, Bruce McLaren was the, the Kiwi. He was the Kiwi, wasn't he? He yep. brought in the team Yes, as his own team. Yeah, I, I get that too, but they had a whinge and... Uh, their their argument was we've been supplying engines for so long and we've won all these championships with our engines, all this shit, and they but got a bit of wishy washy at the best. Oh, you these. jump in and out when you're winning and <laughs> losing, you know? Well, I, I'll get I'll get the fucking rent. I'll have a rant with them, about them in a second. But okay, so the next thing, revised race weekend. You know what? I could see this coming. The three day weekend. Yeah, you know why? Because <laughs> when was it uh, Japan when they had the typhoon come oh, through? Yeah. And they had to cancel qualifying on a Saturday. And what they did, they truncated the Sunday race weekend. And Sunday was qualifying plus the race, right? So I knew that was going to come because... But see, man, that's meant to be a cost-cutting thing. So we have cut cost because we've cut it down to three days. I don't know why I'm saying we. They have cut it down to three days. But yet they've added another race. So the cost that we've saved from cutting it down to three days, ding, 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 baby. that's we're spending, right. We're spending elsewhere because we're now doing more races than we've ever. I done. don't like this more race shit either. I'll be honest with you, man. You know why? Because it's fucking hard work watching a race every weekend. Because the races go. If you want to watch, if you're a nerd like we are, and you want to watch the uh, practice sessions, not saying that we always do that, and you want to watch all the driver interviews and all the coverage that's oh. available there. Plus the race itself, you're talking like six, seven, eight hours every weekend. No one's got no one's got time for that, man. No. So and then you're, but this is what kills me. They're so uh, com- they're, they're so conflicted in what they want to do because they say, oh, we want to cut costs, but then they've got more races. Not a fucking smart bloke, but wouldn't more races cost more? Cost more. And by saying, and you want to hope you want to hope you get your crowd numbers up. Yeah, and I mean, and, and some of these places they already, go to don't have great crowds. No. And then they've already done the. Um uh, curfews, haven't they? Yes. So you know, saving costs on the curfew, and now they've cut the day out. It's it's crazy. I know. I don't like it, man. I don't like it. But this race, revised race weekends. What are they saying? Uh, significant changes. Blah 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 blah. The pre-race press conference will be switched from Thursday to Friday. So yeah, they've got rid of that. Makes sense because Thursday was basically a, a a conference. That's all it was. Why get the drivers in early? I I can understand that. 
Um, so, I mean, drivers are so busy. Yeah, so busy, man. You know, they're so they're so busy with their hot girlfriends <laughs> and their vegan restaurants and their vegan restaurants. They're super hot girlfriends. They got to oh, and it's so bars. tiring. Oh. So, which countries have been added? Well, Viet- Vietnam's next year. Yeah. Uh, Miami looks like it's going to get added as a second US race for 2021. Which would be a good race to go mm. to, man. We've That's been, a street race, is it? Yes. Yeah. And we've been to Miami. So mm. can you imagine that as a night race? Yeah. That'd, that'd, be, that'd awesome. be pretty sick. Um, what else is being talked about? Because Silverstone's well, Germany's safe back, now. isn't it? Germany. Uh, it's Germany. on and off. Germany's off at the moment. Off. And is Britain off? Is that gone? No, no. No, Britain's it's just safe. It's a five-year deal. It's safe. For Silverstone. It's yes, it's oh, safe. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, Germany's doubtful because the German government doesn't want to pay for it. And it was only Mercedes that actually paid for the event. And that's why it was called the Mercedes German Grand Prix. I think it could be in the shit, unless Mercedes really want to get behind it. But you know what? Now, Mercedes are yeah, doubtful. But, but then being we, in. We, we go into that whole other conversation we were having before where apparently they're up for sale. Yep. Can you believe this? Drunk and monkey? Up for sale. They're up for sale. Apparently, yep. not only are up for sale, but they, they under be, offer. They better be bought by a German company. No. Because, no Yanks, Penske. 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 From where? IndyCars. No, but what, what country are they American? American. That will not go down well in Germany. Not at well, all. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I said to Rocket Russell at lunch, I think Mercedes are bored with their own success because they've, they've won since 2014 the Constructors and Drivers Championships, right? What more can they achieve? And they go into a new re- set of regulations where they might not get, you know, success. They might actually have to work for it or maybe they've not actually thought of all their little all the all the issues that can happen with a complete change of regulation so now might be a good time to sell because remember they bought the team who did they buy the team off um was it braun braun yeah and Sorry, they bought can I just clarify are you I, talking about the company complete or the formula one team the formula, formula one, one team, team. right they're selling Sorry, the, i thought you meant no that. No, no no, 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 no. Yeah. they're selling the formula one team right gotcha but they bought that team at a like a pretty cheap price because braun he bought that team for a pound. He bought Honda. This is how it's worked, all right? Honda was in Formula One with their own team. They sold that team in 2008. Eight. And Braun, Ross Braun, he bought that team from Honda for one pound. Wow. Right? Because Honda didn't want a bar of it. Yeah. And so, no pun intended. Uh, no, it, that's a good pun. Yeah, because it, it was actually BAR. Because it was BAR. <laughs> BAR Honda. That's some fucking F1 nerd shit. But so Ross Braun bought it for a pound and he sold it for like, how much did he sell it for? It was, oh, he made so much money, like millions. And then uh, hundreds of millions, of hundreds people. of millions he sold it for. And then uh, Mercedes bought it from Braun. And now Mercedes, after all their various wins and all the money that they've, they've made from, you know, their constructors winnings and all the rest of it are making huge profit. They probably make so much money selling that team. So they're probably thinking, you know what, if we sell the team now, we could probably walk away with a lot of extra money in our pocket after having bought the team from from Braun back in 2009. I can see them doing it. I can actually, because they've got nothing else to win for. What, they've, what more can they do? Other than say, oh, we want to prove everybody wrong. We want to win with the new regulations now, and then we are the we are the true champions. But I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, look, uh, it's it's you know it's why a tough call. I mean, to sell to Penske, Penske. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sitting here in my Scotty McLaughlin V8 supercar shirt, which is a Penske team. Yeah, it's it's a massive organization. I know, man, and it's it's a well established organization. I mean, what in the last month he's bought. Indy cars. He bought um, Indianapolis, the racetrack. Who did? Penske? Penske bought Indianapolis racetrack and yep. then went in the same day decided to buy Indy cars, the entire racing league. The whole thing? He now owns Indy cars, as well as Indianapolis. That's a conspiracy. <laughs> He's not of this world. He can't have that much power and money. Really? He has that much power and money. Fucking hell. So reason, now he's so looking at now he's looking at Formula One because he's already in V8s. He's won the last yeah. two championships. Well, you know what? We'll get to it because Formula One have just made it even harder for people to come into it. So the easiest way will be, will be to buy a team already yeah. established, price, like race winning team. Mercedes look like they've had enough, I think. And you well, know what? Toto it, wasn't even there. No, that's the first time Toto wasn't even at the race. He was at their, the Formula E. Oh. Uh, 
dun, dun, dun. No, I go, Where's the button? Uh, conspiracies! Mercedes to leave Formula One and go to Formula E. It's over, folks. Well, Penske already own part of it. Uh, they own, I think, it's Dragon Racing in in Formula E. Right. That's through Roger Penske's son. Right. Okay. So they're already in Formula. E. I can. Do, do you I, do you see it happening? Them selling. <sighs> it's hard to tell. You know, it's the offer would be. Oh, the offer would be oh, insane. God. But you got to remember what they bought the team for. Yeah. So they've ma- they're going to make a massive profit on this thing, and they're going to say we've proved. See, here's the thing: Mercedes, they've proved it. They've won so many championships, right, and so many constructors and drivers' championships in a row. How much more do they need to be in the sport for? They've got to be there for a little while because I mean, they've what they've just re-signed Williams for five years with the engine deal. They, as of well, you know, well, you know, and what they've just re-signed. They've just scored McLaren as an engine. Yeah, deal. but you know what the rumor is? They will walk away from a factory team to just supplying engines. That I can see. That I can see. That's so they're not going to walk away from it entirely. No, they'll, they'll just supply engines. That's 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 what looks like might happening. But the actual works team, where you got Hamilton and Bottas currently driving that team. The rumor is they will sell that team to Penske and only supply engines, which is way cheaper. And but you know what? You still get accolades because if they win with a Mercedes engine, you're still standing up there saying, "Look at the look at the engineering of Mercedes. We still won." Yeah. No, so what, that's what I mean. What have they got to prove? They've got nothing. They've got nothing left. What else? So what are they saying? Race weekends. Uh, they're going to truncate it. Basically, they're getting it. What are they doing? Practice sessions are getting changed. Yes. So they're moving from four day weekend or three day weekend. So all the practice sessions start on Friday, yeah, and they're getting rid of FP three by the looks of it. Probably. What are they saying? Uh, uh, yeah, well now cars will now be in park firm eight conditions from the start of FP three. So you can't do shit in qualifying. That is stupid. stupid. That is so dumb. So what are you saying? After FP three, you can't touch your car until the end well, of the end you, of the race. So there was another one. It was a hidden, not a hidden rule, but so you know, um, so FP one this year, you can walk into FP one and chuck new parts on the car. Yep. If those parts work, then you can go to the FIA between FP one and FP two and homologate those parts. Yep. You can say, hey, this is our new part. We're done. Yep. Can you just, you know, tick the boxes and yep. we're going to run this on the weekend because it's worked. Now they have to walk into a weekend already homologated. So there is no trying shit out. Yeah, that's there's so no, dumb. There's no bring three wings with us no. and whip a couple of different wings on it. Now you've got to homologate that part before it goes onto the car. So that's that's to try and cut costs again. Yeah, but I think that's going to ruin performance. Well, and ruin and ruin some... It's going to bring simulator work up, isn't it? Well, yeah. Really? But, I mean, simulators... With, with the, yeah. Well, see, this is the double-edged sword. So what they're doing right now is all the testing that was banned in previous years of Formula 1 is now at practice sessions. Practice sessions have turned into testing days, yeah. right? Because there's no other testing days, really, apart from nominated days at the end of the year or whenever they nominate them. So now practice sessions are the best way for teams to do their, pra- their, their uh, practicing, right? So now you're saying practice sessions you can't change after FP3, so you're, you're park, you're, so now where 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 do you offload all your testing and your and your R and D back into the simulator? But guess what? The rule says as well less wind tunnel testing. testing. And the other one you've got to take into account with that is the fewer upgrades, more standard parts, and yeah. more limits on components. Yeah. So they're saying in a bid to further reduce aero de- development costs, a number of wind tunnel run teams can do. Uh, yeah. The number of wind tunnel days each team can do has been slashed, with the emphasis being put on CFD, com- computational fluid dynamic simulations over physical ones. So they can still do shit, but they now do use more computer-based stuff as opposed to yeah, putting yeah. a model of a car in a wind tunnel. I think most teams do that now anyway. A lot of them do, but yeah. I mean, like, uh, look, the, the, what do they call it? What's the, what was the fancy word? The CFD. CFD, yeah. Is good. Is really good. But it still isn't. It you talk to any aerodynamicist, CFD is great. But you actually until the wind is actually hitting that component properly in real life, you can't really simulate that because the CFD doesn't take into account flexes and yeah. all sorts of little yeah. nuances with it, it race conditions, basically. Yeah. yeah, 
So they can try and simulate that that all they want through CFD, but it's still until the wing actually wind actually hits that body part, you yep. don't really know how it's going to operate. So that's all of the things that I've seen on this. Is that everything that they're saying is in 2021? Have I missed anything apart no, from the no. big one that I'm going to drop now? No, this no. is the rant. This There's is a big one. To do, with, you've got to get some young drivers in to the um, practice sessions. But they do they're doing that. that now. I mean, let's see if he but ran there's, for but there's a minimum, isn't there? Uh, they do it every Friday as uh, FP1 or FP2. They give That's one FP1. of FP1. FP1, sorry. They give up a, a, a seat yeah. to a reserve driver that's in their pool yep. and he drives, right? So, And they test actual race car, do they? They drive the they're driving race car. somebody's yeah. car, yeah. 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 So, some, so, for example, Robert Kubica will give up his car for Nicholas Latifi at mm. Williams. They all do that. But, um, both, actually, both drivers at Williams have given up their car. George gave it up oh, last yeah. race. But they give it up to Nicholas Latifi, but don't they? He's the heir apparent, isn't he? Yeah, really? yeah. But they've all got that. So I think, um, I can't remember who it is in Renault. There's a young Renault Academy driver that's yeah, that's yeah. in their pool of drivers that gives up, that he gets a go at FP1 or FP2. They've been doing that for years. Um, I At the end of the day, the biggest change is this, is the way the car looks and the aerodynamics. Because with my big fucking rant, I'm going to drop it. Go do it. It's stupid. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I know exactly what. Drunken you're monkey's got this. He's falling asleep and he's trying to guess. He's thinking I should have. I should have gone home after my fucking ice cream at the Japanese shop. I'll tell you what my big rant was, and I was gobsmacked. Rocket Russell, gob oh, it's smacked. Stupid. Right. They have not changed the engines. The engines will remain unchanged. They will still be 1.6 liter V6 hybrid engines. That, MKU with all, all the bullshit, they're not changing it, and I cannot believe that because one of the biggest things Ross Braun was saying that that he was I got to say he's disappointed me a little bit lately because he was when they first came up with the 20, 2021 regulations, his big thing was same as Bernie, oh we'll, we've got to change the engines because for one because fans don't like the way they sound and they don't understand them. Too right, you don't understand them. They're so fucking complicated. Even the Formula One, even Formula One engineers don't understand them, right? But not only that, they're so expensive that they were prohibitive from other manufacturers from entering the sport. So the big, not my. I mean, that I'm with you on that concern. But okay, so let's look back in the last what eighteen months. You had Porsche approach you with their version of the motor, so they built. An MKU 1.6. Yeah, they wanted, they wanted in the sport they bad. In. They wanted in. And they approached Formula 1 and said, look, we've built this motor. And Formula 1 turned around and went, oh, look, 2021 regulations are coming and uh, we're not sure we're going to keep the fucking they motor. Fu- they did everything they possibly could to get Porsche out of Formula 1, right? Because mm-hmm. remember at one point it was, well, the engines don't, they're not worked the way we wanted to from a spectator point of view. Spectators don't like them. They don't understand when a team gets uh, uh, penalised and then ultimately the driver gets penalised because they've got to change the component of that car and we, they don't like the sound of them. So at one point they are going to make them, I don't know, twin turbo V6s. They are going to be much more uh, noisy and all that sort of stuff. Go back to the traditional aspirated engines of yesteryear, right? Give me a back of V10. Or V8, I'd be happy with a V8. Oh, V8 sound good right? as well. So the point is, they've not done shit with that. And remember what their big thing was? The engines are too expensive, so we, wanna, we want Ford to come back. Right? We want Ford. We want Porsche to come back. We need more manufacturers to come back into the sport. So we have to make less complicated engines. The fuckers left them in. I couldn't believe that when it's, I read that. Because no, when they finally... Because Drunken Monkey, this was going on for years, right? And they were saying this year, at the start of this season, for Formula 1... This year, by June it was originally, they will tell us what 2021 was going to be. And we're all like, as Formula 1 fans, oh, awesome. We're going to see the shit we want to see, right? Mm. Then we got to June. Oh, we can't agree. No one can agree. Like two like kids in a fucking play in a play pen couldn't agree on what toys they wanted, right? So then they delayed it to October. Yep. And no one said shit about the engines. Everyone was thinking the engines were going to be changed. Then when they finally dropped that, you know, dropped the rules out, I'm like reading it once, reading it twice, and I'm like, the fucking engines are the same. The very thing that was the biggest cost, uh, you know, center of the of the Formula One, has not been removed. Has not been simplified. And, 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 and to add to that, the part that shit to me is, it's not something they would have decided in the between June and October. No, 
This is something they would have known about well before that, eighteen yeah. months ago. Because when they, Porsche was fucking knocking on the yeah. door with a built motor, they, saying we're yep. coming. Because Porsche, because this is probably about two or three years ago, Porsche were knocking on the door, going. Because remember. Remember before that? Well, they that, had the 918 hybrid. And yeah. That had finished because the regulations had changed. So they really want to get into it. Oh, they yeah. Really to get but in. even before that, even before Porsche got in, I'll tell you what really, really happened was Volkswagen Audi Group, VAG, wanted in. But then they had that problem with the diesel thing in the US. And they said, oh, we've got bad publicity. It's going to cost us a lot of money to fix that little problem. We, we, can't, go, we can't commit to Formula One right now, right? So they, they didn't come into it. But you know they own 40% of Porsche. Uh, do you want to stand corrected? Well, yeah, please. They actually owned Porsche. I thought they did, yeah. They, had a, they have, they have they for have a, a ma- long time. majority shareholding in Porsche, No, don't no, they? They, they now, they, they now own lock, them. stock and barrel. Okay, so. That was for a long time. Porsche was the last standing family-owned sports car manufacturer in the world. So now VW owns it. And VW have had a big grasp. And it's it's actually really complicated behind the scenes. Like there was lawsuits. And yeah. It just got so sick. So, see, so Volkswagen wanted in bad. But Porsche then they had that the problem. But but th- they were deciding, do they bring Audi in or do they bring Porsche in? Yeah. And, and it p- just so happened that the Porsche hybrid, the 918 hybrid program had uh, smashed yeah. everybody's expectations and they wanted to move and on. And so here's the big thing, right, Drunken Monkey. Formula One for years has said we need another manufacturer that offers competitive motors but yeah. at a cheap price for customers, like, say, Williams. I'll use Williams as an example, even though they use Mercedes engines, right? So what if there was Ford Cosworth back? What if there was Porsche back? They provided just engines but very good ones and teams could afford to buy them, right? Because at the moment, the big complaint teams have had is especially Williams, right, as a constructor, they're like, well, I can't, these engines cost so much money. I'd, if we can get a, an engine that's competitive but ha- at half the price, that's what we need in Formula One. Yeah. The fuckers didn't change it, right? And, and a manufacturer like Porsche, who was knocking on the door, they said, oh, no, well, can't help you. Yeah. Are you we fucking what, serious we now? We don't know what we're doing with the motor. Are you fucking serious? But they said they did know fucking two, three years ago. Ross Braun and his merry men said, oh, we're going to bring in uh, twin turbo V6 engines. They'll still have some uh, hybrid componentry to it. They'll still be this, they'll still be that. But they won't be as complicated as they are, right? Because here's the fucking thing. Here's the reality check. I'm telling you now. Most fucking Formula One fans that go to the grandstands don't give a shit about the fucking green energy of it. They don't care that it's part electric. They just want you an want engine. To see racing and competitive. That's what they want. I want to see overtake. Really and I'm week, telling yeah. you now, they want engines that sound fucking mean. <sighs> and these engines don't, right? That's and they didn't change it. I'm fucking gobsmacked, man. You've killed me with that. Oh, it's ridiculous. And I mean, I know you, you guys have disagreed with me. We've discussed this earlier. I, I'm, I don't like the whole... As a manufacturer now, I must supply you with the latest. Every update I do for my motor, I have to hand down the line. I don't mind that. I've got to be honest with you. See, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying Ferrari, who supply Haas and Alfa Romeo. Let's use them as an example. The bestest bits go on the Ferrari works car. And the yeah, best the Ferrari latest, engine, latest they get the latest and greatest for the Ferrari works engine. and uh, Sorry, the, and the works team. Haas get the dribble, the, the, the dribs and drabs, and the upgrades come slower to their customers. But what the FIA have said moving forward, is they get the same engine, same upgrades as at the you same time. I haven't, that, I haven't got a problem with that. Does that make everybody more competitive? I agree. Yeah, and that's what you want. I ultimately. want competitiveness, but I mean, you've got to. So you've spent how many millions of dollars invested in that motor? You've made the MKU. You've made all these bits. As a manufacturer, I'd be looking at it now going, okay, well, look, uh, we've saved $175 million by this new budgetary cap. Okay, so I don't need to sell as many motors now to you. You know, I don't need to sell your motor because I've got a free $175 million sitting there. So, okay, I'm going to pull my motor back because I don't want to give you the latest upgrades. You know, it's... It, uh, V8, yeah, but then, V8 but then supercars, those right? Cars Everybody then has become faster, more, and then suddenly competition's gone. And this is what the problem of Formula One at the moment is just Mercedes, isn't it? Isn't it over for your uh, yeah, start? Uh, you know what? There's been very few major surprises. Like this, Brazil at the time of this recording was the last Grand Prix we had. Yep. And the only reason why there was a surprise result was because a safety car was involved. Well, at, at seven and seven and and uh, Leclerc. Leclerc. 
we'll bashed each other to bits, basically. But that was a freak occurrence, right? No, that wasn't a freak occurrence. Not, that not was with Sebastian. Seb being a of course dick. it was. Well, you know what? When later on, I'll get you back. We'll do a Formula oh, One yeah, wrap no, up. We're doing the wrap right? up. We'll do a wrap up. Not now. We won't bore the drunk and muggy this much, right? <laughs> It, the poor guy, he's fucking struggling. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's actually interesting. No. So, you know, I mean, I've, I've been to an F1 Grand Prix with you, and, yep. and I, I am interested in it. And the, and See, the car looks great. I like it as a... Yeah, paper you've, seen, you've seen it on the I've net, seen, obviously. Yeah, I've seen it. I just saw all yeah. that and everything. But my issue around this, and we can keep disagreeing with this, or, um, but competition drives fans. If, it, if, it, if you know what it is, and I'm, you know, I'm into soccer, I know who's going to win the Scottish League next week. Next year, I yeah. know he's going to win the French league next year. I probably know he's going to win the German league next year. Where is the competition? And then remember, um, twenty years ago, Australia would win everything at cricket. So you didn't bother turning up in the end. Yeah, you think where's the competition? When you get competition, you get rivalry. You get people talking about it, passionate about it. Let's all get around and watch the the Formula One because this will be a great race. He will say, "Come around." I say, "What? Watch Mercedes win again." So I must admit, this year's been yeah. bad. Oh. This well, year's I mean, been awful. Okay, so we've discussed this during the week. So the race was on Monday morning. Just gone at the time of this recording. At Brazil. Yep. Brazil. When did you watch the race? Thursday. That says a lot. Because mm. I tell you now, you know, well, see. Because we normally Well, text the time zone the was, message. yeah, well, the time zone was awful. So I would have watched it that Monday. Yep. Right. At lunchtime or something like that. And I would have probably been texting you like, oh, can you believe Seb did it again? I the guy's, say. he's. I'll tell you what, he's on thin ice. But we'll we'll leave that for another yeah, that's, po- podcast. But but we, where that's where that day, look, I remember being overseas once and we were watching in two different, I was on the other side of the world. And we were text messaging each other. Yeah. They're watching the same race. Yeah. And boy, I think it's Hungary. Hungary, yeah. And so much happened. And See, well, I was excited. Yeah. For that. And my, yeah. And it's my like father was track. there and he was watching it as a neutral, going, wow, this is great. Yeah. But other times you think, okay, whoever's got pole, off he goes. Yeah. See you later. Well, this year's been really bad for that. Like, Mercedes have really, really, really dominated. Like, they have up until the summer break. I think the summer break, uh, you know Honda what? and Ferrari have made some inroads. Well, that's because. Uh, I think Mercedes have taken their foot off the gas and are de- developing next year's car. They're not. They're completely haven't touched this car at all. This not the 2019 car. They've le- Why would they? They fucking want everything. Why would they start developing it? They will be fixated on next year's car now, and they would have been well, like that German. for so long ago. Yeah, the German. We but, have processes, but they would have. But they're looking for 2020, the 2020 championship. So this year was done and dusted so long ago. They would have stopped developing this year's car. That's why uh, this year's car now is probably not as competitive competitive as it was, particularly in qualifying. That's why Hamilton hasn't qualified on pole for what the last four races. That's pretty unusual for Mercedes, and it's not because they're, they're, they've they've got a bad car. It's because no. they stopped working on it. Right? They basically haven't touched it for so long. So, how many teams do you reckon at this moment have given up on the twenty twenty? Rules and looking at 2021. I'd say a lot of them, particularly Renault. Renault's won. I'd say... But he wants to taste bubbles next year. Mate, Renault... Uh, okay, this is a rabbit hole. Renault are in fucking crisis. They are in more crisis than I thought they were. I'm telling you, they are oh, fucked. No. They're gone. They're fucking gone. If they're in the 2021 regulation, I'll be, I'll be fucking gobsmacked because the 2021 season. Because they, they, they are... over their chance. I don't think they've got. I don't think the board gives a shit. I don't, I don't think the board cares because they're like, well, we're spending all this money, right? For what? Racing around in like tenth and eleventh. Are you fucking serious? Like you just. I just remembered during the week I had a good giggle. Was driving along and a Renault the vans, Renault vans. Oh yeah. You know, like the Ford Transit van, yeah, yeah. big thing. The Formula One edition pulled up next to me. Ooh. You know, it was a it was a matte grey van with yellow writing saying. Well, Formula shout out One. to shout out to Magic Craig. He's got a Renault van. Yes, yes. And he's got a rabbit in the hat. You can in do the an back ad for it. that later. What's that? You can do the ad for that later. The Renault oh, van. We're doing it now. Huh? If you're looking for a van to cart magic gear like <laughs> rabbits, the take out of a hat, get a Renault Transit van. That's right. We're not sponsored by Renault. They probably wouldn't sponsor me because I've been shit canning their Formula One team all this year. But I can tell you, if we did get sponsored by Renault, I'd be very happy and I'd eat all my words. I'd be very apologetic. But I can tell you that the Ren- Renault Transit van, I've been in it. Magic Craig's one. <laughs> it's very comfortable. And you can store so many rabbits in cages. 
in hats, magic wands, capes, all sorts of paraphernalia for your magic gear. Magic Craig swears by it. And I would too. The Renault Transit Van. Get it's yours today. The Master Van. The Master Van. See, for a, a master magician. Get yours today. That's right. Comfort, air conditioning, and a steering wheel. And I think it might be made in France. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, probably surrenders then. Oh, it might be made in Vietnam. They were once a colony of those French's people. Oh, it stops itself. I'm very happy with that. Didn't have to hold the button. So, yeah, the, I mean, the 2021 regs, a car looks good. Concerned about, I think, I actually think 2021 is going to be probably our most painful year. Yeah, I do too. Because you know why? Someone's going to get it right and so and everybody else is going to get it. Yeah. yeah, so what happens when there's a really big regulation change, like a major one where visibly the cars look different, someone's going to get it super, super right and everybody else won't. Classic example was McLaren in 1998 when they went from the wide track cars to the narrow, narrow track, track cars and they had grooved tyres as opposed to slick tyres. And that came in 1998 and McLaren dominated and it was bad. The racing was awful. Because no, they lapped the entire field, I think it was, in uh, Albert Park in Melbourne the, for round one. It was awful, you know. Mika. And, uh, yeah, well, Mika Hakkinen was world champion uh, for uh, 1998 and 1999. Oh, geez, yeah. um, but he definitely would, it was an easy champion in 98 because no one could touch him, not even Ferrari. So that that is the problem. But look, going back to the engines, that's the biggest disappointment I've got. I, and you know, and the other thing that came out this week too, which isn't necessarily a regulation change, this is uh, Formula One saying that they want to be carbon free or oh, carbon neutral by twenty thirty, and that got Rocket Russell fired up, <laughs> and now I want to hear a response. Okay, well, look, let's make this response really, really easy. We already have Formula E. There you go. Do I need to say anything else? It's it is no, you don't. It's, you it's don't. fucking stupid. They, fucking avocado eaters are getting fucking. So everywhere. what did they say? They said they wanted to be carbon neutral, neutral by, by twenty thirty. I don't know how they're going to achieve that, nor how are they going to measure it. But that's hey, another it's, thing. It's, how is that possible? Well, I don't know what, how you gonna, measure. We're going to build the cars out well, of fucking bamboo. I, I want to know how you measure. Ethically it. grown bamboo. No, but I want to know course. how you measure. The big the question I've got for these guys is how are you going to measure it? <sighs> we're going to bring Fred Flintstone back. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to put like legs out of the yeah. bottom of the car. <laughs> it's just going to be a big running race. It's, it's stupid. We've already got Formula E. And, and let, let, I mean, let's look at advances in technology at the moment where your lithium-powered electric car is pretty much already dead. Hydrogen is already taking over as the new Elon the Musk new would disagree with you. Elon Musk can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know he's what? A fucking, he's a fucking. He should now, be. He should be promoted as the king of the avocado eaters. Well, I'll tell you now, hydrogen cars are the way to go. Hydrogen will. Be they the are future. because they don't. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because it's prevalent, and they don't pollute. People think electric cars don't pollute, but you know what? Every time you charge it up, it fucking does. Because where does that power come from? But not only. You that, know what I mean? Like it comes off the grid. Not so only that. Let's look at how a fucking lithium battery is made. Oh, a lot of carbon. A lot of carbon goes out of the. It, it, defla- it, it actually negates the fucking the concept of it, the it car. It actually actually uh, creates more carbon in the lifetime in the lifetime of a car in, during the manufacturing process of that lift, uh, that battery. That's yeah. pr- that's fact. That is fact. Plus, whenever you charge it, you hook it up to the socket, and that power is coming from hey, coal, coal or, fuels. or, or yeah. so. So it kind of it kind of a little bit silly. It's you know? a, there's um. In England and now, there's a service you can rent. So if you've driven your electric car and forgot to charge it, you can actually make a phone call to like an NRMA now and they will turn up and charge your car from a diesel generator <laughs> mounted on a fucking trailer. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking true thing. It is there. Mm. And somebody's going to stand there and go, oh, look, I'm all fucking environmental. <laughs> As I recharge my car directly from that diesel I've, generator. You know, I've always yeah. said, let it go, mate. The environment's dead. Not my problem. Let it go, mate. It's, let it go. But it's uh, the problem is, um, so we had a lawyer at one of my last places at work who was all, oh, I'm a fucking avocado, smashed avocado <laughs> either, fucking. He's worse than me, man, isn't he? He's he's a bit more bitter than I am, drunk a monkey, isn't he? Oh, but, but, but he's passionate, see? He, he, he's passionate. He is, I wound him up by these engines. I should never have said that these V6 engines would be unchanged. <laughs> fucking. 
And they're, well, you know, the fuck, do we follow this sport? I don't know. Well, look again. I like the way the car looks. I'm the big bombshell for me. Going back to the regulation changes, is the engine is unchanged. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. It, it, it. So now you're saying to me, you you know what? You're not going to encourage manufacturers to come into the sport making engines. We've already turned away one of the biggest manufacturers yeah, in the did. world. Yeah, we did. Volkswagen slash Porsche. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So they built, I, I know I've said it a few times, but they built a fucking motor. They presented you with the fucking built motor. And you went, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to change the motors, buddies. Because you know what? People forget in the 90s, one of the biggest um, saving graces for engines, that for teams that couldn't afford them, was Ford. Ford Cosworth. You know, like they didn't make the most powerful engines out there, but they supplied a hell of a lot of a lot of teams. And they were a solid. And Benetton won off a Ford. They yeah. won off a Ford they Cosworth were a engine. Solid engine. Yep. They, they were reliable. Yep. And you're not going to get Ford back in now. I don't think. Who's going to come back in now? They don't. No one understands this bullshit technology. Look how much Honda have struggled in the current era. And they were with the current engines. Yeah. They've struggled. So they've, what they came in 2015. It's now 2019. So five seasons, roughly. And they're finally becoming sort of kind of competitive. And um, I That's mean, Honda. Yeah, and I think that's only on the back of the fact that they've managed to get in with Red Bull. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, that's I think right. Red Bull has done... I mean, McLaren did the groundwork for yeah, them, but, but I think Red Bull has really pushed home. I think, I think Red Bull have allowed Honda to do uh, what they wanted to do, whereas McLaren was saying, you need to build an engine to meet our chassis, which is really small and really tight, and it's not what... And Honda just didn't have the technology back then to, to, to accommodate that. And I think Red Bull have allowed... I think Red Bull's mantra was, build us the most powerful engine you can and we'll build a car around it. And McLaren's was, uh, you need to build an engine to suit our car. And Honda just couldn't do that. And which I is d- the problem Red Bull had with Renault, wasn't it? At one stage there with the new motors, it was tr- they had to fit well, the Well, Renault, the see, this is Renault... Well, go back to what we've learnt with Renault, where Cyril Abipal has said publicly that he knew... Renault would struggle with the hybrid engines back in 2014 because they were so far behind the the the, the planning stages to build that engine. He's come out and said that on a podcast. I think it was a Beyond the Grid. Beyond the Grid, and that was a pretty big admission to say, "Yeah, we got that completely wrong. We missed. We completely mismanaged that." So Renault were so far off the mark in 2014 they couldn't catch up until basically they're still not. They're still not there now, no, right? Even their engines a lot better. It's still not the the top of the grid in terms of power. I don't think it's it's meant to be. Well, Ferrari is, but I they think might Ferrari's have just pipped them with a the yeah, summer but, break. But up until then, the Renault was the first one to break the thousand horsepower. The, S- supposed the the, the the engines are a lot better than it was back in twenty fourteen. You'd hope so. Well, no, it is, but I think their chassis is awful. The Renault chassis is awful. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you go to who who build, builds. Oh, no, they build their own, don't they? They build their own. At Enstone, who know how to build a car? Well, when they were owned by previous companies. Like Benetton. Yeah. There you go. What? Talking about Benetton, during the week, did you see any of the news about Flavio? No, what's he done now? Fuck it. He's a criminal, by the way, drunken monkey. He got. He was supposed to get a lifetime ban from Formula One because mm-hmm. he rigged. What? Well, he rigged the Singapore Grand Prix in two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. There was a. Cr- he made his uh, one of his cars, the Renault, crash. Which was uh, Nelson Piquet Jr., wasn't it? Rocket Russell yep. made him crash because they'd worked out if he crashed at a certain time at a certain place on the track, Fernando Alonso would win the race. Wow! They rigged it. They he rigged a race. He called it. So he actually got on the phone. Is it betting? No, as in I want to win a uh, win a race, and they'd calculated yeah. based on how they were performing and where yeah. they were that if Nelson Piquet was to crash and cause a safety car that a Fernando Alonso would benefit and he'd actually win. So he got on the phone and said to Nelson Piquet Jr., can you please crash your car, crash it on this corner, right, really bend it so you're out of the race and cause a safety car, and he did it because he was told by his boss. But surely he knew you get found out if it's on the radio. Well, no, well, it was all secret code. Yeah. It oh. was all very, very... Uh, Man, manipulate like you know how they say uh, multi twenty one all yeah. that shit. Yeah. That's what it was, but it yeah. was code for you crash. Mm. And so Fernando benefited, and he actually won the race. So when did this come to light? Almost straight away. Oh no, uh, no a few years. years later. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, they they, but they knew something was fishy mm. because of the way it worked. Because um, I think Fernando was fairly well down the the pecking order because the Renault was not competitive, 
And uh, he benefited by winning the race. And something happened. But long story short, for, uh, Flavio Briatore, who's been a manager for a lot of drivers, was given a lifetime ban at one stage for, um, for, for, for causing that. What the hell are we looking at here? That's Flavio's new girlfriend. Holy fucking fuck. Brio Torre is no longer stra- is no stranger to dating younger women. The man who is reported, reportedly worth $569 million once dated supermodel, supermodel Heidi, Cl- Heidi, Heidi Klum. Klum. Yeah. And the pair had a child together. Lenny, 15 years old. Though she was formerly adopted by her now ex-husband, Seal. Jesus Christ, get real names, people. <laughs> He's also gone out yeah, with... like Lenny Klum. Yeah. <laughs> He's also gone out with Naomi Campbell, Wonderbra model, Elisabetta Grecki Oresi, yeah, yeah. with whom he shares son Falco. Nine, Jesus Christ, Flavio, what a How old is this Flavio? He is 69. Yeah, right. you should and see this. Look way. at that. Oh, uh, yeah, another Hugh Hefner. Yeah, oh. yeah. No, no, he makes Hugh Hefner look good. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's got this gut on him that's... He's an ugly... He's not a good-looking bloke. Yeah. No, no. But he's he's obviously got the oh Jesus Christ he's, what he's going out with her yeah yeah that's his current fling the twenty year old law he's got from money Italy. he's got money she she'll be set for life oh no she's set for a year or two no I think it's about I think it's love oh yeah I probably, think yeah, I think yeah. she's actually in love with him yeah lights off <laughs> she's in love with him lights off blindfolds <laughs> oh, hey. uh, yeah, no you look good yeah oh, yep. uh, let me have another shot of rum. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. After another, another stunning snap of Benita in a black bandeau bikini on another boat, shows she travels to the coast of Sardinia in Italy too, proving this girl loves to travel. Of, of course. She's got Flavio. Well, she's got Flavio. My only question is, where are mum and dad? How old is she again? 20. Yeah, where is mum and dad in this bullshit? Yeah, on a private yacht he's paid for, probably. Jesus Christ. Have a look. You should have a look. It's insane. But no, so he got donned. What did he get? Jail time? No, he was given oh, a lot. Lost a bit of weight, actually. That's Flavio there. Oh my God. So, the, okay, so this guy's made a lot. Most of his money, Drunken Monkey, was made in managing drivers. Yeah. So Fernando Alonso was his manager at one point. Mark Webber was a manager. I think it was his manager at one point. I'm sure it was. Did he have Flavio? I thought he had somebody else. No, he had Flavio at one point. Did he? Yeah, because Flavio was uh, trying to get him to go to Ferrari. Uh, Michael Schumacher, of course, was, oh, he was, was Flavio's... Um, at the start, yeah. yeah, before he went to Sabine. Yep. Uh, he's had quite a few drivers of note, but he was given a lot... At one point, I'm sure he was given a lifetime ban. He was ban. given a lifetime He ban. could not enter the Formula One paddock ever again. And yet he appears. Yeah. I call it's, bullshit. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make sense. No. It doesn't make sense. No. So what else is your problem? So that's my problem with the Formula One regulations, Rocket Russell. What are yours? I, Did I miss anything? No, I don't. Uh, look, I've already stated, I don't like the rule regulation. I don't like the motor regulation. Let's use Honda as an example this year. Yep. So what, they threw how many new motors at Red Bull? Like the new versions. Oh, dude, they're they're in. Okay, you know what? Remember Ford with uh, Stuart Ford. Yep. Remember when Jackie Stewart had his own team? Yeah. Literally every race weekend, Ford would have a new version of their engine because um, yeah. back then you could do that. Yeah. So it was like stage four, stage five, stage six engines, right? And um, you got to also remember that's back in the days where you could had, change engines, but you had detonator motors. For that's right. You know? But they were changing their engines so much, right, yeah. to try and compete. Honda are very close to that. They've got like so many revised right. So motors this over year. the course of the year, they've have they given those teams those motors fairly to all teams that follow them who are using them. I think they have, haven't they? Didn't Toro Rosso get the same? No, no, Toro Rosso didn't get it. Still haven't got it. That was a that motor was a one off built for Red Bull for Red Bull for probably, Max probably, probably for Max Suzuka. only. Yeah, did so. Uh, so, that, so, okay, so, so you're saying Albon didn't even get it? No. So that brings into a, a, the question of the thing of, so you want parity, you want all the motors to be the same, right? Across every Ferrari team has the same motor, every Honda yep. team has the same motor. Yep. So now this brings up the point of we now have to manufacture four motors. Yeah. We have to manufacture those six motors to be the exact same. We have to give them to everybody at the same time. 
everyone has to fit them at the same time. So that's added cost on them, added cost on the other teams having to take a motor out, fit a new motor. There's, I just see costs adding up. So you're saying the problem really is not so much the performance factor, it's more the timing of insta- insta- installation you can't, of these engines. You can't... Like the if team, we look at the motor that was Honda through at Suzuka, right? Yep. That was a one-off motor given a max. Yep. It was a one-off. It was something they were trying. You know, they were trying a new way of doing it. It was an inlet valve or something. Yeah, yeah, something. Right. You can't do that anymore, can you? So You yeah. can't throw a one-off these, motor. You've now got yeah. to throw that motor. You can't just walk into a race and say, look, we'll take the 10-spot grid penalty. We're going to try a new motor out. Boom, bada, bing. Now you've got to walk into that same Grand Prix and say, okay, I now have six motors ready. You need to update yours because I want to update mine. So you have to spend money. You have to have the new motor. Yeah. So those six teams now, instead of just one team having attempted to try this motor out, all six teams now have to fit that motor for that race. And you don't even know if it's going to work. Is it going to be there for the next race? You don't know because this is a trial motor. Yeah, because a lot of the teams will go, you know what, we'll take a penalty hit now to – because we want the better engine for, for I don't know, Suzuka, because we yep. know we're really competitive in Suzuka. Like Red Bull, I think, have done that with Hungary. They did it. The yeah. Hungarian Grand Prix. They took a hit the race before that because they knew in Hungary they'd be competitive and they wanted the best engine that they could get. Yep. So the coordination of that's pretty uh, important. Yeah. But what you're saying is if you standardise it, how do you actually how do you actually do that? Because you're, you actually uh, some other teams won't have the... But what, can't they take the option of getting the new... Power uh, when when it's available at their discretion. I don't. I think that's what they can do. If you want parity, if they're saying that you have to supply the same motor, the same updates, that means that if you put that motor in, they have to put that motor but in. Don't they do that now? Don't they do that? No, no but they they don't force it. They say the the engine's available. You can take that option when you when you're ready. I'm sure they do that now. Well, they have the motor there, but I mean. They don't there's force no rules it. that enforces. No, that. there's not. But there's but they say basically. But I mean, again, we go back to that Red Bull motor. They only built one of them. They didn't give it to Toro Rosso and say, oh, look here, here's the latest and greatest motor. Fit it at your discretion. Yeah. They built one motor, they put it in one yeah. car, and they ran it. That was it. They didn't build six motors. They just built the one. So I you've s- got to build six motors now with the latest updates. You've got to make sure that everyone's got the same firmware. And then let's look. We've all met idiots. They're, they exist. They're out there. So let's say the you've given your new motor to Williams, you've given it to McLaren, and you've fitted it yourself. You've got some numpty who's doing a firmware update and has grabbed the wrong firmware. So what happens at the end of that race when the FIA come in and go, oh, hang on, why are you running an older firmware on that motor? Everyone else is running this version of firmware. Yeah. What happens in that kind of situation? Because yeah. that is, it's going to happen. You know it what? happens to the best of them. It's going to be... this. <laughs> There's a bit of mess with these rules. It can be a bit messy. The the, the cost capping is is potentially very messy. The standardization of engines, how they're going to coordinate and parts, how they're going to coordinate that. But in principle, I don't have a problem with that. In principle, but I do see your point of, well, if you're telling people to change engines to have the same engines for Ferrari based teams, you're going to create a problem with the timing of that. You're going to make a team change engines at a time they probably weren't ready to, and you're going to throw out their and then schedule. You mean, you know, if you build that one motor, you run it in one car, and it not you didn't get the gains you thought you'd get in it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, we've only made one motor, so see yeah. you later. Yeah. Quick, give him version four back. Yeah. So yeah. can they? I mean, this is a question that needs to be asked. Can they do that now? Can I say no? Actually, look, they've given me the latest motor. They've given me the latest. I don't like it. I want to go back a generation of motor. Can they do that? I don't know, man. I, I, think, I, mean, I, think it's a bit, I think it's a bit messy. I think at the moment that's how they can do it. They can they can opt to at take the, moment you can the opt latest to take spec it. or they can keep running. Because remember, Renault did that. They they had a uh, – I know they only run um, – well, they run only their team these days, don't they? What have they got? Who's – Renault, Ren- that's it. Renault's it? only running Renault? – oh, McLaren. Oh, at so, the moment. So, so at yes. the moment. So they had the spec C engine. And I think only Ricardo took the spec C, then then Hulkenberg took the spec C, but McLaren was still running spec B, so they were running an inferior motor. Yeah, but they 
I think they had the option to take it if they wanted to, but because of the coordination and timing of installation, they didn't take it. Exactly. That was their issue. But that's what I would imagine. But now you've got to, you know, not only that, you've got to give out. So, okay, yes, we've got a new motor coming for, we've, we're working on a motor at the moment. We think it's going to be ready for round four. Actually, no, sorry. We've now got to build four motors. I'll so be ready for round six. Yeah. And we don't know if it'll last. The timing's the issue for this. Yeah. But again, maybe the and rules the are cost. the same. It's another cost factor. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just try things out anymore. Yeah. You, you've got to homologate it. You've got to have six of them ready. You've got to have, you know, every team's got to be bang. Yeah. You know, I just see the cost. They're trying to save money. I can see cost blowouts. Well, you know what? They got caught out. They caught uh, got caught out pretty badly with this because remember when they said you're only allowed four engines a year? <laughs> that actually cost more. It costs more. Because of the R&D requ- requ- uh, required to actually keep an engine Alive. alive for long enough so at that the, they only use the, four engines in the year. At the plus more, power, it's they were yeah. better off having motors that detonated more more often because their costs were less in the R and D lab when those back in those and days. Back in the eighties, we loved to detonate a motor. God, fuck, I loved it. Oh, they you, would just. You very rarely see that now. You don't see it. They can't do it anymore. Well, no, you did back in Brazil because Bottas's engine went up. Yeah, that wasn't a detonated motor. Like you know, they built those motors knowing it, that it was going to last for three. I laps tell you, that was the that first was time it. I saw a Mercedes engine blow in a few years, blow in a long time. Yeah. Okay, I have got two questions then. Here we go. One. Yep, we got we got reader we got reader mail. Oh, oh, a yeah. Q and A session. Yeah. Hi. Here we go. So hello, folks, reader. Yeah. So Gladys from Bakewell in UK <laughs> says <laughs> yes. Um, they're going to be shorter weekends to ease pressure on the team, so they're getting rid of the Thursday. Yes. Yes. Is that the right decision? Uh, it depends on how they're going to structure the weekend after that. So on Friday, what are we going to see? Are we going to see FP1, FP2? And yeah, you're going Saturday to see free practice see one and two, and there'll be the press and the media interviews as yep. all okay, on the same so then day. On Tuesday, oh, I mean, sorry, Saturday, we'll see FP3 and qualifying. Uh, yes. So, so go back a so, second. So FP3 qualifying, the race are unchanged. Well, so basically, so all they're doing basically is moving yeah. FP1, which was on its own on a Thursday, mm. to Friday. No, it was on always on a Friday. FP1. Oh, no, it was set up, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, Thursday yeah. was set up. Get there, get to. There's the nothing on a Thursday. No, Thursday was press conferences. Press conferences. Yeah. So what used to happen is, and still does, the drivers would come to the track on a Thursday. They do a track walk and then they do a press, press conference. conference. What they're saying is they're getting rid of that. Yeah. I can understand that. They're saying... But they're still going to have to get there and set up. So the only people who are not going to be there now are drivers. Yeah, exactly. Your but team, you're still spending the money on the yeah, team yeah. coming to construct all yeah, your yeah. stuff. They're basically the giving the drivers a day off because the drivers aren't turning up on a... <laughs> the poor drivers. I know. They, they work so I know. hard. I know, I know, <laughs> fuck me. But, it, but So basically the change is Thursday they're scrapping any activity on a Thursday. Bar, Friday... Bar fr- team setting up. Bar team setting up. Friday will still be, still be P1, P2. And then the Saturday will be P3 and then qualifying, qualifying later on. And then Sunday will be the race. Is that right? It's going to have to be. Unless they're going to go is Friday, right? Friday, yep. Friday is FP1, Sunday is FP2, FP3, no, Sunday. Fr- no, f- so apparently Friday is FP1 and 2. Yep. yep. And then um, the FP3 qualify and the normal race will just stay on Saturday, Sunday. That's how it is now. That's yeah. how it is now. So but that's that, that basically Thursday but that, just gone. Yeah, but that surprises me because when they did the Japanese Grand Prix this year and the Typhoon came in, they had to truncate it. And FP um, pra- uh, qualifying was on the same day as the race, race. Yep. right? And you know what? A lot of the drivers and the team said, oh, we like it because hmm. we actually uh, have – more time off at the front end and they were quite happy with it. And I thought, oh, well, there you go. If the teams are saying they like it because they've had a na- like a force of nature cause it, then uh, they're going to just do this from now on. See, that's another fucking thing. I can't believe they didn't change that. Mm. They, could, that, was a, that they could have changed that. But you know what they're worried about is uh, crowd numbers. Yes. They want people to come to the ground or the track on a Friday, get their money's worth by having – some practice sessions and they're relying on the promoters of the event to supply like V8 supercars or, but you know what? We've, we're one of the few countries that actually do something like yeah. that. Yes, we are actually. Yeah. yeah. It's quite strange. And we got other reading yeah, mails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <we> <laughs> like this. We had so, two questions. Yeah. Um, Lenny Klum from the Betty Ford Clinic oh, in Los Lenny. Angeles. Yeah. Lenny Klum. Shout oh, out to Lenny Klum. Lenny. No, you need another beer, mate. Yeah. <laughs> 
Obviously, with them losing the Thursday, it makes it, and this is quote, a more feasible, and this is my question, yep. budget-friendly event for fans to visit. Is Formula One budget-friendly? No. No. Not no. a chance in no. hell. Well, yeah. you know what? In Australia, it's more than any other place because at least kids under 12 get in for free. But Jason Relaxation just took the kids to the Singapore Grand Prix and he only saw P3 and qualifying and he said it was so expensive and they weren't – and they're under 12 and they didn't get in for free. They, they paid a lot of money just yeah. to see that. So the answer to that question is no, it's way too expensive, mm. particularly – the only people that go to P th- like a practice session are the hardcores and people that have like booked in a like if we went down to Melbourne together, we'd probably go down on a like three a, day pass. Like a three day pass. Yeah. And you'd probably go see the first practice session and the second, then you'd go see uh, uh actually no, you'd go see P three and qualifying and then you'd go see the race. That's but, probably what you'd but do. But you'd be looking you'd at around fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, with accommodation, yeah. Oh, and airfare, shit, yeah. Easy. No, I'm talking no, I'm not I'm just talking about the three day pass. No, no, no it's, it's not that much. It's three or four hundred. Uh, from memory, wasn't it? No, we paid. Remember, no, we, we went on the Sunday, that. and we paid. And we're going. That's what four years ago. We paid seven hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd say it'd be about eight hundred, nine hundred bucks for three days, four days. Yeah. It's pretty expensive. Yeah, it's ridiculously expensive. Like you don't do it. I'll tell you now, it's a treat. It's a fucking treat. Oh yeah, no, you don't do it. I know yeah. you don't do it. I'd love to. We should go. Oh, yeah. At some point, fuck yeah, we should all go. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne's the easiest. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, yeah. I'm lucky I was there for an Adelaide. Oh, see, I would have liked Adelaide. You Adelaide. spent $100 on a cap. Yeah, I did. There it is. Yeah, it is, that one there. The Lewis Hamilton one, cap. Yeah. He's got the Williams one. I've got yeah. the Renault one now too, by the way. Oh, you've got the... Yeah, yeah. He, Chase he Re- did bring it? Yeah, but he did, he did, yeah. You can bet you won't be spending as much when you go to Elton John on a cap that yeah. you spent on that one. Well, I tell you what, that's before you buy the shirts. Oh. Whoa, mate! You want to talk about yeah. you want to talk about expensive? Fuck! You want to buy one of the mechanic shirts yeah. that you can get down there, mate? You're talking hundreds. Well, three hundred quid. We saw Mercedes one for. Yep, uh, and that's so six hundred bucks. Yeah. Wow, it's a lot of money. Yeah, but see, this is the problem with Formula One. There's no consistency amongst the events. So, for example. The, the Australian GP, which is obviously in Melbourne, that's run by the Victorian state government. So there's a lot of money there to promote it. Mm. And there's a lot of money to, there to support it. So you'll go down there and get your money's worth because there'll be, if you're in the motorsport, there's V8 supercars, there's what, Formula Ford. There's some other like classic they've cars. Signed, they've signed TCR as well. For yeah, the there's all sorts of stuff other than Formula One. But what could happen if you go to a pretty remote track like, say, Abu Dhabi, I don't think there's many events other than Formula One, is there, Rocket Russell? I don't think so, no. So, um, I think what could you imagine? So, we're talking about how much tickets are for Australia. Yeah. Could you imagine a Monaco ticket? Oh, fuck. Don't forget. Well, you know, you can buy the tickets now. I'm looking. Are you I'm looking? Right. Are I'm already on there. Have we got other route and mail? Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the prices. Yeah, here. well, because I want to go now. I'm keen. I'm, no, I'm being serious. I'm just deadly serious. Just got to decide. Obviously, the better races are in international, like Singapore and that. that they're more fun. But yeah. Australia is obviously easier. I want to do Singapore more so than do I do Melbourne. Man. Yeah. Is it a street, night, yeah. the whole yeah. shebang. And as I say, we, we, yeah. we want Melbourne, to- though, is a, a, a great spectacle. Mm. It's such a great spectacle because they really get behind it. Yeah, but they're so Fosters, so I'm not going. <laughs> no, it's Rolex, dude. Rolex. That yeah. was the that was a title sponsor last year. Rolex. They serve Rolex. I've never. Heard yeah. of that I've never no, heard you, of that. You bit. walk in and it's you get a Rolex. Yes. Everyone gets a Rolex for just turning up. What? Oh, but on, look on the upside for the Melbourne tickets, you get free tram travel. Oh, it's right. actually not that bad. Um, what, what I'm looking we? at a general admission mm. four day pass, 185 bucks per adult. What? Yeah, that's, that's, that's 300. Very good. That's general admin, but yeah. that's oh. not a stadium. But, but I will tell you something now about Albert Park. If you go general admin and you get early enough, you get a great spot. Oh, you will I've get never, a awesome spot. At, but you've got to be early. A, bought yeah. a, I've been to Melbourne, what, I think it's three times now. Yeah. I've never bought a stadium seat. I've always bought general entry and because you can move around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you, you will, just find a spot. Mate, you will get a great – but you've got to be early. Yeah. You don't even have to be early. We I were, think you do though because – We were there late. We were drunk. And <laughs> we got a great spot. Great. I want to go now. 
But stadium, so what a stance. <laughs> what you listen to this. He was drunk, right? Yeah, great spot. He realised he was in front of Harvey Norman <laughs> on the TV going, this is a great spot. No, actually, a really good spot to get. <laughs> is there. That's a really good spot to get just there. Oh, JB, yeah. Okay. JB, <laughs> hi-fi corner. No, no, no. I, I went to the Fangio stand, which is on the pitch straight. Oh, yeah. That's a great spot. What's that worth, man? What's um, that worth? I didn't actually hang on. He's taken over. He's so taken over. So, so we just put it out there. So Rocket, Rocket Jess. Uh, oh, shout out to, shout out to Mrs. Rocket Russell for letting uh, Rocket Russell stay, uh, come over on the weekend and do some recording for us. I appreciate it. Shout out and shout out as well to Mrs. Rocket Russell for liking me on Instagram. She's the only one that does. <laughs> um, so when we talk about Formula One later on tonight, I uh, love you. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> now you've got ideas yeah. about going down there in March. I feel like, You know what I love about Melbourne? It's the first race of the season. Yes. Now, I'm gonna, I'll put money on it. You and I will do our own podcast on preseason testing. We'll have all these wacky speculations and all the rumours about who looks good and who doesn't. But you don't know until you go down to oh, Melbourne and well, you see let, it. Let's look at this yep. year as a prime example. Oh, Ferrari looked awesome, but that Ferrari was shit. Was, were amazing. They were a second and a half quicker than everyone. And then we hit racing. And oh, they were terrible. By the current... Yeah. Um, the, the current FIA yeah. regular uh, FIA yeah. checking of the you know what I've heard people internationally on podcasts and uh, YouTube channels that do Formula One Albert Park's not a great racetrack I'll agree with that but it's got great fans you know what I mean it's oh. for the fans that's the only reason why we've got it because we've got a great fan base because the track isn't that great I don't think no. there's better tracks man come on oh yeah you know but but, but but we have a loyal fan base. Yes. Especially with Daniel Ricciardo. If there's an Australian in, in Formula One, we back, we, we go, it's pretty cool. Oh, it's and, very, and last yeah, year I watched it on TV and there was a sea of yellow, yellow Renault, and yellow Renault, green hats. Yeah, yellow and green hats, Renault hats. It was awesome. What'd you see? It's on my wife's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> No, that wasn't a joke. It's on my wife's birthday, so I can't go. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> Shit. Take that back. No, so I'll be out for next year. Oh, no. What were the tickets, though? Uh, 185 is great. Yeah, that for is general, really, for general admin. really good, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Rocket Russell, I'll go with you if you want. Yeah, it jumps up. But the problem is you need accommodation. That's the fuck up. That's Five, what, 530 for a four-day past in the grandstands. How much? 530. That's not bad, man. That's I remember superb. paying that. I remember paying that ages ago. Like, I'm talking like the 90s, like 1999. Uh, so it and, includes reserve seating in the Brabham grandstand. Yeah, that's not bad. The only thing you're going to tack onto that is airfare. So that's what, 300 bucks, 200 bucks? If you got in early, yeah. Airfare? Yeah. It's fucking Melbourne. You're going to drive. It's like nine hours, dude. You're going to have to drive, dude. He's got a Renault van. You got a Renault van? <laughs> have you? Yeah, we go down there in a Renault van. Oh, yeah. Formula One. <laughs> if you want to drive to Melbourne, <laughs> a Renault van is a great way to get there. That's right. We're not sponsored by Renault, but I'm sure if we had a Renault van, it'd be smooth, quiet. Comfortable Renault vans, check them out today. And plus, you can stick your magic gear in the back <laughs> like a rabbit, a magic wand. I know because I know someone that's got that in the back of their car. So, there's a drunken monkey. Plenty of space for rabbits. And if the rabbit poos in the back, you can wash it off because of the slip tray in the back of the Renault van. Renault vans for your pleasure today. I do have to hold it down, see? <laughs> Don't need him. Don't need Jason relaxation. You are cool and relaxed. You are cool and relaxed, Rudra Dan. Have we got any other reader mail before we go? No, 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 no. Go, go, keep going. No? No other reader mail? Are we going, are we? Oh, well, we're soon. What are we at? 123. Oh, wow. Mm. That just flies. It does, man. It's like a, it's a time vortex. It's just amazing. So that's not bad, Rocket Russell. Look, I know the state government made a big effort to keep the prices down. The problem is if you go international, I, some of those are not cheap. Like, I, I, You know what I'd like to do? Go to Abu Dhabi. No bullshit because they've got the Ferrari oh, world there. That'd be awesome. Oh, fuck. What's, what's Ferrari world? Mate, that's the museum in, for Ferrari. It's right next to the track at Abu Dhabi. The and it's got actually runs, it and, runs next to the track. Yeah. And mm. it's got the world's fastest roller coaster in it. Oh. Look that up. Yeah. Look, that that is amazing. That's at Abu Dhabi, which is um, this weekend coming, isn't it? Yep. 
last race of the season. So on the next podcast, at the time of this we'll recording, do, we'll, do a, we'll do a wrap up. On next, the next podcast one. we do with you, Rocket Russell. I'll do a wrap up. I think. And we'll. Uh, I think we should. Um. So so to get you thinking in advance for the next podcast, mm. uh, I think we we should do something. Like what? Let's name some things. Rookie of the year. Oh yeah. This well, you know what I wanted to do, Rocket Russell. I want you to think about this. This is your homework assignment. I wanted to grade every team. Like A, B, C, D, E, F, okay. right? Yep. Great every team. Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Standout driver. Standout of the year. driver of the year. Uh, consistent I, driver of the consist- year. And best, uh, most improved. Yep. I think they're good crat- uh, categories. Yeah, yeah. I'm we'll probably forget that. all that bullshit. No, I'm definitely. <laughs> I definitely want to do. Oh, <laughs> forget all of it. Fuck. <laughs> I definitely I'll want to do something back. like that. Are we cool with that? Oh, he's yeah, looking. Yeah. What are you looking up, Melbourne, uh, Albert Park? No, I'm about to show Drunken Monkey. Oh yeah, Abu Dhabi's out. insane. Where is it? That that roller coaster, man. It looks mental. Oh, so uh, we don't even uh, we're zoomed fa- fairly out. Can you see it? It's pretty impressive. That's what she said. The big, big red dot in the middle there. Oh yeah, that's Ferrari World, which wow. uh, stands out from my fair distance. It's like a yeah, like a. Oh, wow. That's very impressive. Oh, it's air-conditioned. It's all air-conditioned, yeah. yeah. It's all undercover. Yeah, all yeah. At the only problem with Abu Dhabi is, he's the only problem with it. A bit like Adelaide back Can't in the day. Can't get bacon. Well, there's that. But back at, like, like Adelaide back in the day, everything's been resolved. Very, usually, the championship's done. Yes. Very rarely have we seen a championship go to the wire, the last race. So you, you're only there for the spectacle. You're not there for, like, the... Oh, who's going to win the championship? Because it's usually done. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, I, I can't remember the last time we had a season where it did come down to the wire. You know what? Uh, 1997, Hareth. Schumacher oh, v. Jacques, Jacques Villeneuve. That was like one point. That was eight points, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you know what? They all qualified on uh, on the same time. Michael Schumacher, Jacques Villeneuve, and Heinz Harold Frensen, yes. they all got the same lap time for qualifying. And I think Jacques Villeneuve put it on pole from memory. And then that was then of course Schumacher had that incident with Jacques Villeneuve. Remember, he nerfed him off the track, but he ended up damaging his Ferrari and, and retired. He was very bad. Not yeah. Boy. Any other Ruder Mal, drunken monkey? Uh just I think there's only one left. One left. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, that's from a Dwayne Hicks from LV426. It <laughs> says, Dwayne. how the hell do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? <laughs> you, you fucking don't. Um, and, but he also, um, thank you for this, Mr. Hicks. He also yes. suggests a good outro song today. Oh, here we got one. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good one. It's got to be that one. Yeah. Because it all fits in. Mate. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, I only do outros with you. No, no, you do. I don't do it any, with anyone no, else. No. So, so that's, you're very that's, special. That's my thing. Yeah, it's your thing. All right. Have we said everything we wanted to say? You're right. International tickets are fucking stupid. Yeah. What? How much are how they? Much? I'm looking at Abu Dhabi at the moment. Yeah. Um, where do you want to go? Let, let's just say hospitality Formula One paddock. Yeah. $1,471. What? Is that all? I think that's cheap. I do too. I'm yeah, not taking the piss. I thought you were going to say three to five. No, I think if you're oh, no, going... that's the Yas Premium Hospitality, the Terrace Hospitality Main Grandstand, Saturday, Sunday, 3010. Yeah. Um, what about the Formula One Experience Packages? The Champions Club Gold, Saturday, Sunday, 5,423. Oh, I don't know. No, no, let's go. You know what? Hospital depends how much you're into one things and well, how you value, because it's a once in a lifetime. I think, yeah. say, because people go on... You know, two week cruises and stuff their face for the same price. Yeah, so I don't think that's that you expensive. Want, you know, it would be an awesome trip, but you don't have the time or the money. None of us do here. Follow NASCAR for a year. I was going to say that, or Formula Formula One for a year. So you start off in Melbourne and you work all the way around the circuits, and you end up at Abu Dhabi, and that's it, and you go oh, home. Wow! It's Imagine a, that. No, but no, you, but along the way, obviously, you don't just do F one. You go yeah, see the absolutely. the sites of the particular yeah. city you're in. But your aim is to get back to the Formula One track for the race. No, I've always said that with oh. with the missus. If we win money, I'm following the Formula I'm One. I'm sure you could year. actually line that up. I'm sure there's mm. a Formula One oh, package out definitely. there that does it. I'm sure there you, is. Yeah, the time, the money. Oh, the, time, yeah. money. But none of us have the time yeah. for that. But but I did make time for that. 
if you had the money. But you basically you got to have the money. But you That's basically, the neck, yeah. but you basically go to all corners of the world. World basically, yeah. you go to all the major continents except for Africa. Because they don't have South Africa. But there's talk about that. Oh, yeah, that's Kalami funny. looks like it's coming back. It's from South Africa. I think they want it. I'll tell you now. Because cause you know what? Cause yeah, concern, but you imagine, yeah. yeah, but you can't do pit stops because you know, there's a risk of kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't prepared to do that. Well, they've already you, done We've that. been there. Yeah, we went, yeah. we went. You know what? You don't stop. Because we couldn't work it out when we went to South Africa, right? You don't, they don't stop at a red light. They actually crawl. Through the intersection, look both ways and then speed off. Yeah, and we're like red flag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, you can't stop at a pit stop. You'll get you'll get jackknifed. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard that was like Melbourne in some areas nowadays. <laughs> oh fuck, Melbourne's not good either with that uh, shit. Yeah, but you know why? Because they came here. They fucking got him here. It was not. It wasn't the Melbournians. They fucking they, they were sitting back peacefully, and then all of a sudden they went, "Well, it's like being at home. Well, if a car stops at a red light, we'll fucking jack it. Why not?" Grand Theft Auto bullshit. On that note, I think we're done. Rocket Russell, have you said everything you wanted to say? Do you agree with my beef? I agree. My with rant. Beef. Yes. That's my biggest, I cannot believe, what a fuck up. Between that and carbon neutral, I think it's stupid. Carbon neutral is going to come in 2030, so they've got plenty of time to work on that little bullshit, but I want to know. forward to the But you know room. what? Don't, I love how people go carbon neutral. I love, you know what I love? When you go to a plane and you sit on the plane, they go, for an extra 30 bucks, do you want to be carbon neutral? I'm still on the fucking same plane, in the same seat. What difference did it make? I know, they're using biofuel in that oh, motor. Oh, bullshit. Just that motor, just for you, biofuel. Oh, crap. So who's going to measure this shit? That's what I want to know. What governing body is going to tell me that Formula One is now carbon neutral in 2030? It's, it's, it's not a... It can't be realistic. It's no, it's not realistic. It's bullshit, in my opinion. I'm with you. No, I'm with you, too. Thank you very much for letting me know that you're with me on this bullshit. Rocket Russell, I appreciate it, but come back soon. We'll do a wrap-up. Yes. An end-of-year wrap-up end when it's finally up. over. Drunk and Mikey, thanks for being part of it. Thanks for reading the uh, reader mail for me. That's okay. That's the first time we've ever had that. Yeah, we can do that one next time. I apologise for you snoozing off about the 20-minute <laughs> mark of this bullshit <laughs> podcast. I don't blame you. It was subpar, even by my fucking standards. Why do we follow this fucking sport? <laughs> I don't know. It pisses me the fuck off. But Every I'm... time I think they're going to get over it and they're going to do something decent, they fucking do that shit. I thought Always... it would be good with Bernie gone. I thought this is No, be you know what? I'll tell you something now. Bring him back. I'll tell you something now. Bernie would have done things different. And Liberty Media, I, I'm not... They've done a lot of good, but at the same time, they've done some silly... Th you know what? They've, they've turned it into fucking Disney. They just they've done the Disney on us. So they're getting ready to uh, sell it to Penske. They want everything. Penske's going to buy everything. Well, you know what? Re watch this space, re uh, Mercedes, because I wouldn't be surprised if Mercedes pull out and just, no. and just, do, just, and just supply forward. engines. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Not at all. And on that note, thank you for the two people that have been listening to this bullshit podcast. Thank you for... What you've got some reader you mail? You sing your outro. No, oh, no, outro. I'm sorry, yeah, outro. Yeah, mate, I ain't coming I'm back. I'm sorry. Do your outro. All right, we've got to do the outro. Do I know the outro? Do you know the outro? Madness. Oh, I've been driving in my, my car. car. It's not my a Jaguar. Car. I bought it in a Primrose Hill from the bloke from Brazil. From a man from Brazil. He's got no tone, this guy. For a white guy, he's toneless. If it's rolling and he's 5.0, it'd be fine. It was made. Ice baby. It was made in 59. In a factory by the time. It says Morris on the door. The GPO owned it before. Can you sing it for me? No, I know no, no, you do the outros. That's it. I'm not, I don't. Oh, now it's that, gone that'll off. do. Anyway, you did you did it. It's you gone did off. It. You did it. That's it. Did that, I do that, it? That was an outro enough for me. Okay. Good. I'll be back. Thank you. Christmas special, hopefully. Yeah, Christmas Yeah, well, special. I'll organize it when Jason Relaxation is over his bullshit his, what, his did, his what, is, what does Jason the sock puppet say? Yeah, we will organize saving soon. Druggy monkey and and <laughs> <laughs> and Rocket Russell, you just have to be patient. I am going to create the invitation for you, and we'll have a barbecue. <laughs> and until that note, 
Thank you for the two people that have been listening to this bullshit podcast. Thank you, definitely. Letting us use your garage. I'm sorry I read about Formula One 2021. I don't know if it will be around in 2021. I find, I find that very depressing. It's only two years away, but it seems like so far. And I'm, I'm gonna, not actually I'm happy with. Keep you alive, you motherfucker. I know you, you fuck. Fucking do this as well. I don't. Ha- I don't think I like the regulations at all. I don't like the engines. They're not changing. I don't. Lo- I do like the look of the cars, but they look a little bit. I don't know. They look a bit too safe. Sexy. They look a little bit too sexy. I don't know. And I'm a little bit upset that Flavia Flavia Briatore is pulling chicks like that at his age. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole I can't get out of. It's something that needs to be improved on. And until next week, my little Formula One FIA stewards that want to fucking regulate everything and make things carbon neutral have more drugs in them and more bullshit. But until then, you can roll it, monkeys. <laughs>